My life is littered with failed attempts to exercise. It always starts out the same, motivated, excited. I imagine how great it will feel to be strong and flexible, to look better, whatever the ideal of in shape is, to get that emotional high that people talk about. And I want to be healthy. I feel this the older I get. When I went up for a, a checkup recently, the doctor told me I needed to do more because, you know, you're not so young anymore. What everyone loves to hear. Whether it's because I want to be fit or because I worry about being unhealthy, every few years I try an exercise routine. Maybe I buy running shoes because I always love the idea of being able to just take off and go. To explore where I am, the city, it feels like freedom. And it would be fun and a way that I could get in shape. Another time I signed up for a gym, LA Fitness. I would not recommend it. They kind of con you. I got conned. They give you a free trainer lesson give you a workout that just destroys you. And in that state of just exhaustion, they convince you just how beautiful and strong you will be if you did that every single day. And then when you want to quit, several months down the line, when you realize you don't actually want any of that and haven't been coming, they make it almost impossible. The pattern is always the same. I join something, I buy running shoes or weights, I go to the gym, I get excited and I have a plan. And then the steam runs out. I don't like to think of myself as a quitter. Not usually anyways. But I think the reason why I keep quitting is simple. Exercise is hard. I look at the marathon runners out there today and I talk to friends who run marathons, and it sounds like suffering. And I believe that because when I try to run, it feels like suffering, too. I always had this idea that someday that would go away, replaced by a nice ease of being in shape. And maybe it does for some people, some of you, and I am jealous of that feeling because that never happens for me. That always seems to linger, that discomfort, always too long. And then my motivation dips. I ask myself, why am I doing this unpleasant thing? Isn't there enough suffering in this world already? Isn't life hard enough? There are already the regular ups and downs and stresses and frustrations of life that, although for me are not usually overwhelming, doesn't leave me wishing for more. And then you read the news, and it feels bad there, too. Another crack forming in our democracy, another human right in danger. And I usually come to the conclusion, I don't need another hard thing in my life that causes me angst, that says I should be doing this thing. Why put myself through it? And yet there is always another voice in my head that tells me otherwise. It comes from years ago back when I was a teenager. From the one time I didn't quit a physical activity when I decided to join my high school wrestling team. I joined my freshman year because I liked the idea of being tough. No one could push me around. I was small. I was nerdy. It wasn't exactly the pinnacle of an athlete. Wrestling, by definition, is a macho sport, a sport that exudes toughness and grit. Our practices every day were long and brutal. The thinking was that if you learn not to quit in practice, you would not lose when it came down to the match. The matches were only six minutes long, but they felt like an eternity when your full strength is matched against someone else's full strength. Every ounce of you is sapped at the end. 
often it would be won by whoever's strength lasted the longest, whoever could tough it out to the very end, the push past exhaustion. The coaches who we had, they were a kind of accountability structure for us to keep us from quitting, both from practice and just kind of slacking off, but also from the whole sport in general, because it was hard. There was a lot of yelling at us, a mixture of encouragement and insults about whether we were lazy or weaklings. Mostly it felt that they were doing it to make us better. But underpinning it all was a philosophy that through suffering comes success. You learn to suffer and survive in practice so you could win and be victorious in the match when it mattered. Suffering meant hard work, it meant dedication, but it was worth it because it meant victory. To motivate us, we had posters throughout the wrestling room with phrases like, no pain, no gain, and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Now looking back, I am proud of the toughness that I developed through those four years of wrestling. I look back and remember what my body could do, and I can hard, it's hard to believe. Could I really do 200 sit-ups in a row? 60 pull-ups and push-ups? Not anymore, for sure. But it gave me the confidence that I could be tested and tried and pushed to my limits and get through it. It felt like my toughness was beyond question. Now this may have been something I needed growing up, when I was a shy teenager who needed a confidence boost. It gave me the blessing of adult role models like coaches who said they, they believed in me, who saw me struggle, and whose approval I felt like I earned. It protected me from bullying, which affected some of my friends, and let me be part of a group of people bonded through communal suffering. But looking back, these ideals that governed the wrestling team, they seem a bit harder to justify. Maybe because I've gotten used to quitting things over the years, I'm sure my coaches would be disappointed. But also because I'm not convinced that the principles of no pain, no gain really apply beyond the wrestling room, or maybe even there at all. Now, it's true that suffering can teach us a lot. It absolutely can. We learn a tremendous amount through the pain we experience. We learn about ourselves, who we are, our ability to persevere, where our strength comes from. These experiences force us to think long and hard about why we are in pain and what we want our own lives to look like separate from it. The hardest times in my life have been some of my greatest teachers. Pain can bring us gain in that way. Some all four, hard work, perseverance, resiliency. But I think that is different than glorifying suffering as a way to become better people. It's easy for other people to say that suffering is good for us. It's easy for the gym to say that your painful workout will make you happier because they're getting paid for your membership. It's easy for the boss to say that you have to suffer all-nighters, take long nights away from your children because they get the benefit of all your extra work. It's easy for the priest to say that suffering is a path to God because doing something about the root of suffering is a lot harder for a religious person to change. It may have even been easy for my wrestling coaches to yell because it made them feel powerful, like they had control, reveling a bit more in that than they perhaps should have. A philosophy that lifts up suffering too much risks people being taken advantage of. It tolerates unjust suffering. 
There's a difference between discomfort on one hand and pain on the other. Discomfort can be good and natural and help us grow. It's when something doesn't feel quite right that rubs up against us, that causes us a little bit of pushback, but doesn't coerce us, doesn't force us. Pain just hurts. It's harmful. It leaves scars. It doesn't help. Occasionally, my teammates and I would complain about a part of our body that hurts. Usually, we were told one simple thing. Deal with it. I played through a hurt knee for a whole season, and now it hurts when I run. Another guy broke his rib and didn't have it looked at for weeks because he was tough. We feared looking like whiners in front of our coaches and the team, but the injuries were real, the impact long-lasting, and it didn't matter at all how tough you were. Our coaches had codified suffering as a value, not just to be tolerated, but to be celebrated. And if you hurt, then perhaps it wasn't really about your suffering, but just because you were weak. It dismissed real suffering, real injury, and the people who were experiencing it. Suffering became a character flaw. Now, that may seem like not such a big deal for teenagers doing sports, but it gets to become more toxic when we look at it on a larger structural level. It happens when people suggest that those on the margins are suffering because they don't work hard enough, because they don't know how to tough it out, because they make poor choices. It elevates people of privilege as somehow knowing better moving their responsibility to help because those who are suffering are the ones at fault for not knowing how to grit through it, last through it, to deal with it. People of privilege reason that because they don't experience the suffering or perceive themselves as having overcome it, then the people who are suffering are suffering because they lacked will or strength or intelligence or something else. It becomes their fault. That's because our society is confused, I think. It pretends to see virtue in resiliency, but in truth, it sees virtue in winning and overcoming adversity. It's not about facing it, but overcoming it. In this world, paradoxically, it's those who suffer the most who face the hardest obstacles, they are the ones most likely to be forgotten, ignored, and disrespected, even though they have been dealt the worst hand of anyone. And this toxicity affects everyone, because none of us can be, should be, are strong and tough and resilient all the time. It's just not if we believe that it is only through our toughness that we are worth being respected, we risk condemning the fullness of ourselves. We will wall off what is tender within us, what is vulnerable, what is gentle and sensitive. That part of us that needs kindness and mercy, that offers others compassion and understanding. It's that part of us that when we exercise, wants to love our bodies, not punish them, that feels pain deeply and doesn't want to pretend that that isn't there or be ashamed of it or act like everything is just okay. Too often the desire rooted in this no pain, no gain, what doesn't kill you makes it stronger, philosophy is not a desire for personal betterment, not some genuine go goal to be fuller, healthier, but an act of self-protection and self-preservation, a defense against a society that suggests that we are only good enough when we've shown ourselves 
strong enough and tough enough to overcome. The effect is that we are not allowed to be losers or quitters, nor anyone who is down on their luck, going through a hard time, or dealt a bad hand. Because those who are suffering should just embrace the pain it helped you grow, right? So we learn to hide ourselves, pretend we are fine, act tough, instead of being honest and real. This past summer, I tried my most recent attempt at exercise. I gave it one final go. My fiance and I decided to try yoga, something that felt doable, that we could do together and get ourselves through the commitment, be accountability partners for each other. We also liked that it had kind of a spiritual side, involved meditation and mindfulness, and while asking our bodies to move and grow, so often we were sedentary. Now, there are some instructors that we have encountered who are like our wrestling coaches. Who, when you are in a pose, tell you that your mind can carry you through far more than your body and that that pain is going to take you to a new spiritual plane. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger. There's a breaking point and there's spiritual clarity. I can get that a little more with yoga because there is a space where the mind shuts off and we are free to not think because our bodies are in a different place. But what I like most, and the instructors I like most, are those who understand that it is not about performance. It is not about pressure. And so that I can go there and I can just be myself. I can be physical. I can exercise without that part of, in my head that is telling me I need to do better, be better, and change. Or that my body is bad or weak or needs to be different than what it is. I like not having my worth on the line. That I'm not about to be labeled weak or not good enough or wimpy. I like being able to take a break, to go less hard and not push through the pain because my life doesn't need more stress. I like listening to my body. I like caring for it, treating it like a friend rather than something to punish into conformity. That feels liberating. And I think it is liberating for all of us to feel like those times that we can find something where we are not defined by our response to suffering or hardship, that we let that define and dictate the kind of people that we are. We can replace that veneration of suffering and winning with a love of ourselves, our body, our feelings, our souls to know we don't have to prove anything to anyone. Knowing that we are good enough, I have found is what actually lets us open up and grow and get better. Because the heart of who we are is not on the line. We're not governed by fear. We're not governed by ego. That is the path to real growth real learning, real wholeness, real gain. It lets us trust ourselves, be kind to ourselves, push through the pressure, and discover what we really want from what we are doing. So when you hear that little voice in your head that says that you should be different, that you should be tougher, that you are, should be judged or not good enough because this doesn't feel quite right for you. Turn it off. Push back those voices, those wrestling coaches of your life and say, not today. Be a quitter. 
if you need to be. Be a joiner if you need to be. Just listen to that part of you that is gentle and tender and kind. Kind to yourself and to others. Because this world is hard. There is enough suffering in this planet. And what we can contribute to it is to be easier on ourselves and one another. To not be ego-driven, defensive, or fearful. To fall gently into that place of love and compassion. To know that we are good. We have nothing to prove. Let that voice be inside of you. Follow it. It won't kill you. That is true. It may make you stronger, but the good news is it will definitely make you more whole. May it be so, and amen. Thank you.